This is the programming pinhole for the Marble Machine X. It has a very special shape. The walls are tapered and I'm machining it in a kind of a V shape so that when I'm bending the PE300 along the radius of the programming wheel, the whole walls are straightened out. This geometry have proved very complicated to machine, especially to machine fast, since we have to cut 59,000 holes. It has been essential to optimize the tool paths. So a lot of work have gone in to optimize the CAM tool paths. And what you're about to watch is basically me being in the deepest rabbit hole I've ever been in trying to figure out how to machine the PE300 plastics on my CNC machine to get the musical precision that the musician in me knows I need but the beginner engineer in me have a problem to provide. I'm down to a precision level of hundreds of millimeter which for a plywood person like myself is a scale that I've seldom worked at. I want the Marble Machine X to play tight music so that's why I'm spending so much time in this rabbit hole and I'm dragging you down in it as well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Many of my designs on the Marble Machine X are overcomplicated due to aesthetical reasons, but the design of the programming wheel plate is actually very, very simple. I just wanted to throw that out there that for once it's actually not me self-inflicting extra complexity for no reason. I'm just trying to solve a difficult problem. I think the design is as simple as it can be done. Now it's just about the execution. To evacuate the plastic chips, to not have them melting in the holes, I'm trying to add compressed air. 15,000 RPM on the spindle, 12,000, 9,000. The slower 9,000 RPM of the spindle will melt the chips less and make real proper chips of the plastics rather than a melted mess. Yeah, the chips from the 9000 looks best. Here, here, and here, and here has definitely more burr than here. And these two occasions were the slowest ones. So I'm thinking we should try to go even slower. Test four for today, much bigger hole size. Now I'm going to do 0.14 offset with 200% feed rate. So this looks very, very good. The 200% feed rate helps a lot. Now we just have to bend this and test the minor shape. This was the look this morning. You can see there's much more burr left in the holes. And this is where we are now. It's not until the thing is bent to its radius that it gives the correct result. Okay, 1.4. Yes, 0.2 offset all kinds of crazy 0.14 four millimeter step down helix plunge 200 feed rate and i can't see how this could fail on a full plate but every time i made a full plate something has gone wrong something new has gone wrong so after two million tests this like 13 14 hours of machining and not a single mistake and i was so psyched and i tried the magnet fit and it was perfect and now it's one day later and the holes are too small this pe 300 not only distorts when we're bending it but it's also deflecting which means that when i check a test fit and i check it right after cutting i'm like oh this is a good test fit nice let's go for that and i cut the whole plate with that fit but the morning after the holes have shrunk <laughs> it's the deepest rabbit hole i've ever been in so what you could do is that you can machine the holes rough cut them and then let the material shrink back and then do a finishing pass that's 12 plus 12 hours of machining <laughs> so what i'm going to do now is that i made a new test fit with much larger holes so there's much more play now and i hope the holes will shrink to the fit i want like that and now i'm gonna cut four alignment holes that are symmetrically placed so we can flip the board later 180 degrees and maintain the same relationship to the zero point over here <laughs> now 
next me step perfect so these countersinks will be used later and here are the indicating holes you can see there's a really good nice fit the rest of the machining we're gonna do upside down and all these holes are symmetrical completely symmetrical to these four registrator point. So it doesn't matter actually which direction we flip this in. I'm gonna flip it like this. So this board is now flipped 180 degrees but in very precise relationship to the zero point. So now we can use these pre-drilled holes for hold down screws because we know that no machining operation is going to go close to these points. This is made to cut acrylic and it cuts PE300 like butter, of course. It's a one flute, two millimeter in diameter, eight millimeter flute length and mill. It's a beauty and it's our workhorse for the coming 12 hours. <laughs> That's what I like. Okay. I broke the tool bit. After checking every, every, everything, I forgot to check one setting. And that's a setting that we've been optimizing that Alex found here, motion mode. I didn't hear the machine because I had the air compressor on. Normally I hear when this is wrong, it sets to exact stop. It should be in constant velocity. As long as this option is on, this wouldn't have been any problem. Oh, I'm getting desperate over this. I had a lot of help from Alex and James from the MMX team by troubleshooting the CNC machine and finding the constant velocity setting over the exact stop motion mode setting was a real find. Just got new end mills. Nice German newspaper. Oh, they solved the Sudoku also. Five new end mills. So these are my new two millimeter swords. They're made from transformium and I'm gonna use them to slay the dragon. Now this test piece is bent to the correct radius with the metal sheet underneath and as you can hear putting the pins in and out is effortless because right now these holes are machined oversized. We now have quite a lot of slack and the crazy thing is that these holes will now shrink overnight because when we're milling these the material is being pushed to the side and not entirely cut. It's deflecting. So after feeling these holes and feeling how big they were with a 0 0.18 offset, I decided to make four new rows and all these four have different sizes, different offsets. So this first one is really loose, 0 0.18 millimeter of 0 0.04 millimeter offset on each edge, 0 0.8, 0 0.12 and 0 0.16. I let all these rows sit overnight and I take a decision tomorrow which one is final. I have a micrometer now which officially makes me twice as cool than before. <laughs> I can actually show you with this tool how big 0 0.04 millimeter is. So I can show you the difference in step between these holes. So these lines you see in the bottom ground are millimeters 0 0.04 there. This is 0 0.04 there is close about there. So that gives you an indication how small the difference is <laughs> with this fit. I'm hoping for the third row, the 12. I'm hoping 16 will be too big tomorrow. I think four will definitely be, be too small tomorrow. It's already tight now. And I think eight is just not safe enough. The 12 feels really, really, really good. One of the ABBA guys said that a melody it's like a dragon. You have to sit by your grand piano and wait for it to stick its head out and then you chop its neck off. <laughs> as much as it pains me to put out videos without successful payoffs at the end, I'm also happy to share my frustration with you, the viewer, and paint a truthful picture of this process. I'm going to work day and night to wrap this up. 
in the next week's episode. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for believing in the Marvel Machine X. I want to say thank you to everyone who bought the Marvel Machine X I Believe t-shirt. That's an amazing support for the project. I also want to say good luck to you in whatever you are doing. See you next week. Take care.